and welcome back to part two, so episode 22.2 of A Toy Kind of Mood, the diorama episode. <laughs> We're talking about dioramas. Now, part one was kind of a, a, a macro view, if you will, and now we're going micro and we're talking about the pros and cons uh what we like about handmade prefab what all goes into it uh so uh you know who i haven't started with yet fabio let's start with you man i've talked you've always kind of been like the the go between so let's start with you now what you got all right all right um so uh as i said in part one you know i kind of went from the homemade stuff to kind of more prefab stuff or stuff that i can you know work in with stuff that I already have. Um, so one company that I've been really into lately is, is 12 world, which is a company Ken, Kevin mentioned They're They're out of China. They ship directly from China usually. So it, it can be kind of hard to find them in stock in the U S there are a few, you know, kind of specialty collectible shops. Like, you know, obviously big bad toy store will have it for a slight markup, but uh, you know, Cotswold collectibles is, is one of my go-to sources, kind of a big GI Joe, you know, military type uh, action figure seller but they have a section for 112 and for dioramas. So they, they do keep a good amount of these in stock. And the ones that I've gotten um, from them have all, have all been like packed great. And that's important because these are all made out of resin. And that's, that's one really big thing about them is that they look great. I'm going to turn on some lights here. They look great um, detail wise, but since they are resin, you do have to be a little careful with them. Not quite as much as with foam, but you know, you don't want them to hit pieces of themselves. So right here. Oh, I love right that here. one. That's the stone lantern platform, right? That's right. Yeah. Beautiful. So what we got here, this actually has a little light in here as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, also, if you're going to be searching for 12 world uh, pieces, you can use TW toys. That'll be like uh, the code that they're shipped under. So that may right. make it easier to search for. It is. Uh, sorry, really dark on my desk. So here. This is, yeah, like you said, it's a little lantern. It's literally just a base. It's the, the lantern here is not attached. Mm -hmm. So you, it, it does have some like 3M tape that you can put on the bottom of it right there. And then it'll stick right there into that spot. It's really just meant as like a little foreground, you know, or background piece. It's not really like a full set, more like a little accessory. And this is kind of to illustrate, this is the smallest that these 12 world sets usually go. It can be as small as just like a single figure base right here but then they can also go a little bit bigger for not too much price difference. And that's, that's kind of the important thing about these guys is that even though they're nice quality, really good detail resin, they're actually not too expensive. This one right here was 40 bucks on Big Bad Toy Store. And it's just like a little like ruin, you know, like a destroyed kind of half wall painted on both sides. They bring this up just a little bit. Yeah, there KJ's got the box. The code for those interested, TW1901. Yep. They all have they all have like weird uh, codes like that. That's the best way to search for them. It'll lead you to like AliExpress and stuff. So this is a really nice little piece, but you know it's it's again just kind of like single figure size. You can maybe put one on each side. You know, man, this lighting is terrible. Oh, that's nice. There we go. Sort of like one of your Mezco shows right there, right? Right, exactly. The customs. Exactly. So here, you know, you can see how he would scale for this thing. It's I'm not very good at this angle. Hang on. Um, so this is kind of in the medium size, I would say. They're, they definitely go a lot bigger. This is still kind of on the small, medium side, but for 40 bucks, you know, all these pieces come apart. So if you wanted to just use this wall by itself right here, you wanted to see the floor over there and you wanted to put this guy over there, then you've got a kind of a little more laid out scene, you know? Yeah, you can kind of explode it so that you can have a deeper layers whenever you do decide to take uh, those photos. Right. So that's cool because it's a, uh, you know, very versatile, it's, it's a wall, but they do have some more specific stuff. And this is one of the cons right here. This is one of the first ones that I got. And that's how I learned how fragile this resin can be. If you look real close here, there's actually some very small white chips that I've already like taken out of this guy from it. Just like kind of falling over and hitting like a piece of itself or, or you know, just lightly getting brushed, you know, from me like putting it down or something. So you do have to be really careful with them, but you know, the, the quality speaks for itself as well. Moving into a, another one that I think KJ has here. This is the bunker door, I believe they call it. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, scene expansion hatch. That one's a lot of fun. Once again, let's see if I can find the code on here somewhere. Uh, here. There you go. 
I haven't, put the, yeah. I haven't okay. put the decal on it, but this door is like a separate piece. So this is one con on this one. It's it's cool because you can just use this wall by itself, right? Yep. But you know, if you wanted to put a door, you know, you could. And it's another great, just little single figure base. Stacks up really nice. These guys stand nicely in it. You know, it's it's a good scale enough so that you can get some like low angles on it, but you know, still be able to like cut, cut off the top of it and not like break the illusion. So I do I do like this one a lot. I actually have two of this one. One guy uh, was selling them loose on eBay, and I picked up both of them off. I don't have the box for that one, but it's definitely worth it. I could see uh, probably like I could see like maybe like Ellen Ripley and like an alien and whatever in front of that door too. Like exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. It's something gonna, about to be breached. That one. Yeah. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. Now this one is just a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna have to pull it back. This is they call this the Afghanistan ruins. I'm, I I think I have that one coming in. We'll see. I have to trust it, but I definitely want that one. Yeah, this is, again, very weird angle. I'm trying to show as much as possible here. There we go. So it's this one's definitely on the bigger side. This one was, I believe, like $65, like I got it for. Nice. This is a good price. This yeah, is going yeah. for 100 right now on eBay, unless you luck out. I lucked out, so we'll see if it comes in. Yeah, um, this one is great because it, it can kind of double as an interior as well if you wanted to, again, cheat the angle and only have the inside here. You got this hard edge. There is like an Afghanistan, uh, like two essentially, that is kind of like another end of this staircase plus another level. I don't know how well they fit together and that's another kind of con. They're not all really modular to themselves. So it's not like there's a perfectly cut edge where another half of it will, will attach, at least on these kind of individual pieces. You can like layer them and cheat the illusion of that. But even the Afghanistan like part two even though it has a staircase, it won't connect perfectly to this. It has to, you have to kind of cheat it, you know? Um, but again, these are all, these are all facade, you know, they're not entirely meant for, uh, to be viewed at from all angles. So uh, jumping, jumping in. So for example, the blasting ruins uh, that I showed in the last episode is part of a set. This doesn't actually connect together like Legos. You just sit them right next to each other, right? But you can right. like, you can switch them up. You can do all sorts of things in different combinations. Right, and I showed this one in the last episode too, along with like the big staircase that Daredevil and Punisher were fighting on. And that is a two-sided, like two-half dial that you put together, but just, it, it doesn't, it's not like a Lego, like you said. It doesn't all fit in super snug. There is a little bit of like maybe warping to the resin or just from the mold or whatever, where it, it all fits loosely, like it will connect, but it's not like, a perfect like snap together shut kind of thing it is it is kind of loose so that is that's something to note but again these aren't the most expensive diodes out there they look fantastic these are all again little singular modular pieces on this guy right here um this actually is a, a one six base as well so this is a 112 hydrant that it comes with but it also comes with a one six one a little bigger mm. and then on, it also comes with a, um, a manhole cover that i replaced with one of the ones from the uh the mezco Superman, Superman with the Gotham City on there. Yeah. Man, I'm trying, trying, trying to get that Mezco Superman. It is Man, gone. if I hadn't turned my, my second one into a Snyder Cut black suit one, I would have an extra for you. No, I appreciate it. Because I, mean, I, I want you to pictures. complete that Justice League. <laughs> I want to see pictures of those. That's dope. Yeah, and again, this is great because these modular pieces, I'm thinking of as like, this right here is just an accessory. I can mm -hmm. put this as part of a completely different display, and it can just be, you know, a... Uh, debris that I don't have to like make and as much as I appreciate the uh you know putting turf down and all that stuff yeah just like the girders um as, you know putting turf and all that stuff down is is cool for a display but when I have more premium figures I always worry like oh what if I get like a grain of sand inside of the ankle joint and now I can't articulate it enough yeah. just dumb stuff like that you know I don't take them outside either for photography this is all just meant to like make indoor photography a lot cleaner and, and neater uh, so that, that's one cool thing about these pieces. Again, they're all just modular. They all look like actual slices from a big mold, you know, so it's like a literal slice of a 112 world. And Fab, the whole thing is resin, right? Yep, these are all like fully resin. So yeah. These are hard. I mean, you can knock them. Yeah. They're, they're tough pieces, even the accessories. And this right here is, is one of my latest ones. I got the ruins too, but they're way out of the way and KJ has them. So why do I need to show them? Yeah. Um, and you actually got the complete set. I didn't even get the blasting wall. 
you know what? The thing is, um, but you got to be careful because shop around. If you're not careful, you end up spending a lot of money that could go elsewhere. So every cent counts. But yeah, I'm very pleased with my uh, acquisitions. And this right here, I also got from uh, Cotswold. This is, they just call it the floor and fence set. But it literally is what it is. It's just a resin floor. You get this little, you know, parking stopper thing, little barricade. And then this is what I really wanted. Is it's a fully like metal fence. This is like real wire. This is all welded together. Can you get a closer yeah. look? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I love this. I liked the fence piece more than anything because fences are something that are really hard to make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is cool because it even has like a fake barbed wire on top, which is just, you know, like a slinky. It's just a coil that's just attached here. But again, these are all meant to be illusion. The only thing, my biggest complaint with this one is that it, it doesn't look like the picture in terms of, um, if you look at the floor right here, you'll see where I have like the, uh, the stand for the fence doesn't fit like cleanly on the edge of it. Like I would like it to sit flush like that on both sides, but if you want it flush on one side, it's gonna stick out a little bit on the other side, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit annoying if you're trying to put two of them together, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Yeah. So you have to just kind of cheat that again. But overall, I like having this. It's a floor, it's a fence. As I showed in, in part one, you know, I had this fence just kind of layered in to like otherwise bigger background. Imagine if you wouldn't be able to see anything back here. It's just a cool, you know, option to have for sure. But the, the biggest, you know, marriage of all of this would be to just combine it all together and have one big set that you can just go ahead and, and photograph from any angle and it would look cool. Um, so while I switch my, my camera back here, um, that is my spiel on 12 World. Let me throw it to KJ, who, who's got some, some cool stuff of his own. I don't know if you want to follow up anything with, I mean, with 12 I, World. Like I said, what I like about 12 World is that it's modular. It's 360 degrees, so you can stick that with anything. I'm going to be incorporating green screen, ultimately, with a lot of my uh, dioramas and my photos. So it'll be great to have some in the foreground and then have, like, you know, like a blurry, out-of-focus photo in the background, something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my favorite brands that I like using are Extreme Sets. They had just released their Multiverse Collection Wave 10 for pre-order. Mm -hmm. And this is the ground pack 2.0. And how the ground pack works is that you basically, when you have dioramas, you can have like metal grating or cobblestone or anything like that uh, in the bottom. Let me go ahead and just take out just a few examples. But what I like to do is not just using them for ground pieces, but I also like using them for backgrounds. So for example, I would take that hatch door and I will put something like this in the background. Right. So that even though I don't have a full wall, this mm -hmm. just goes up in front. And then you also have, like I said, the metal grating is pretty cool. Yeah. You have the um, this wood paneling. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, you would probably use something like this for your bar set. Yeah, like uh, I, I did send a picture to Bobby with my bar set from Extreme Sets. Well, I'll get into that in a minute, but 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 yeah. but, but, but show us show us your 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 thing. So basically, with this Extreme Sets, what I decided to do was. I wanted to make a bigger version of something like this. So here's an example of a diorama wall and uh, floor that comes with like the Marvel Select Netflix Daredevil. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, uh, when I started collecting again, I started getting a lot of these Marvel Select dioramas for my uh, figures to stand in front of, War Machine, Black Panther, that kind of thing. And then I decided, let's just make a really big version of this, right? So one of the best um, manufacturers in the game for decades has been Bandai, Power Rangers, the Super Sentai figs in Japan, that kind of thing, right? right. Uh, what they have are effects and uh, options. So for example, here is a Tamashi option brick wall. And what's fun about these are like all the different configurations you can do with them. So you can um, incorporate different uh, stands and different effects. An example of a stand would be uh, this. So this is an official Bandai uh, stage stand. Mm -hmm. It comes with, you know, it's clear so that it doesn't take too much um, attention away from the figures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's modular, so it can actually come out like this. Uh, this piece here can come out. Um, and you can clamp your figures around it 
so he opens up, that kind of thing. And this is really made for SH figure art scale, which is a little bit smaller than Hasbro scale, smaller than the Legends and the Classifieds. But with some of the figures, like uh, the Troopers or the Ninjas, you can make it work still. I've been collecting a lot more figure arts. So an example for an effect is this. So here's an effect. So this sort of looks like a laser blast, right? It's still um, in the brads, so I would still need to nip it out, right? But you can do stuff like this, make it look like it's like laser effects, that kind of stuff, explosions. Yep. Uh, here's an example of a knockoff. So this isn't Bandai. This is what you would call a KO version or a knockoff version. So I got this from eBay. There are different sellers. Uh, you can find some West Coast, you can find some East Coast, you can find them all the way in Japan or China. So this is like a sort of like a Dragon Ball Kamehameha blast effect that I'm going to use for some of my other figures later. You can kind of see the figure doing that. And you can put that on a stand in and of itself. And and to be clear, I mean, even though they're knockoffs, a lot of the way that it works is that it's it's made in the same mold as the factory. Mold. It could be it could be you know molds that are retired or that you know the tooling on them is is not great anymore, so there's too much flashing. So then they get replaced with a new version of that mold. They throw away the old one, and another factory ends up with it, starts making it in different colors. So with a lot of the Tamashi stuff, you you do end up with a lot more options with the chaos with the knockoff. Oh, yeah. So here's an example of an impact piece. Uh, so it's, once again, modular. This center version comes out. So you can make it look like... Oh, nice. Well, mm -hmm. Like a wall's being blasted in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Or even then, it comes apart. So then you can have it like different pieces. Like, bah! Yeah. You know, on the next episode of Dragon Ball. Ah! I, I have a photo with one of those effects that I'll send that we can layer in here. Awesome. So, and then... Even with that, so here's a version of, once again, more knockoff effects. Uh, there's wind, there's lightning, all sorts of cool stuff. Like I originally got it for some like X-Men, that kind of thing. Yeah. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into the main event, shall we? So mm -hmm. I have to be very careful with this. So this is for displaying for you on the uh, online. That's really nice. So this is kind of Joe versus Cobra. Yeah, that's really that's dope. Nice. So you can see I have, uh, once again, one of those impacts, and I actually have a Hasbro explosion effect. So Hasbro is actually starting to make their own stands that you can get on Hasbro Pulse. Mm -hmm. uh, the explosions so far come with figures like Black Widow mm -hmm. or the Deluxe War Machine, which I'm a huge fan of, that kind of thing. Um, and also, if you look very closely, Bobby, you may have a punch me for this but you'll see that there's different sections in these brick walls. So this is about three of the brick walls put together. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm using the Extreme Sets ground panel um, with that. See, so there's gung -ho. To keep this all together, you can also see by I use a lot, a lot of sticky tag. Yep. Um, let's see if I can get this out. Mm -hmm. So you have these little panels that come off and then you will put in those different stands that you can then link in other characters or even other explosion effects, like the lightning, like uh, magic effects for Doctor Strange, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I tend to do what you do. I, I take different pieces from different dioramas and just mash them all together, because you just have to basically to see what works for you. And clearly that 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 translates great with mm -hmm. like mixing extreme sets with like, I'm assuming KJ that the brick wall is made out of plastic. Uh, yes. Yeah. So you can even yeah. see the back of it. Like if you want, you can put in some of the different pieces for yeah. safekeeping in the back. Yeah. Gotcha. Damn, I'm surprised you can hold all that. That's impressive. <laughs> so there's foam in the bottom. Um, there's a photo I sent to bottom. He'll probably end up putting it in. Uh, just to keep it steady. Like I said, a lot of sticky tack. But mm -hmm. usually I wouldn't have to use sticky tack. I just wanted to be able to show you for um, for the recording. Uh, for the vlog. Otherwise, this would be static. This would be down the ground. Mm -hmm. I'll probably either use another extreme sets. Let's see if I can pull this off very carefully. So, like, if I wanted to, I would do something like this. Right. Okay? Right. And then I would use that for the photos. I would use green screen to make it look even deeper. So, like, there's like a city in the background or something like that. Yeah. You just want to mm -hmm. be resourceful, and it definitely helps to like have a game plan about what you want the scene to look like, what you want to use. Uh, a lot of this is modular. I can use this, reconfigure it, repackage it in dozens of different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. 
and that's a good mix of, of a ton of stuff right there. You got the, the extreme sets floor, you got the, the Bandai walls, you got the Hasbro effects. I mean, it's that's that's really the the perfect world is to combine all of these things to do you know what works best. Like I was that's what they Kevin. call me Black Genghis. I'm right? uniting exactly. all the different nations, all the different toy nations. Exactly. You get your extreme set, you know, deep in the background, yeah. and you get your twelve world in the foreground where you're actually gonna see detail. Oh yeah, I wanted I wanted to find a way to get some twelve world it's it's just process right having all that stuff um so you go piggyback on what kevin said so i do have that bar scene which you have a picture of yep. um and then basically I, I do the same thing that kevin does like I, I you know i i got like a little video game thing for it i got some stools i varnished those stools i have a pool table and you can probably show that up also you can you see the picture of uh, senator bernie sanders he's sitting there chilling with rogue having a beer um, <laughs> So yeah, he's sitting there ch chilling. Uh, Raphael's playing some video games. Gambit and Cyclops are having a pool game. Ryu and Psylocke are having a beer, like at one of the tables. I just like, like with my dioramas, like sometimes I just like to just have fun with it. It's just, it's like I'm not trying to create a, like a. I mean, you guys' battle scenes are great, and I and I and I do actually have a battle scene I'm going to do with that ninja thing. Plus, my next custom diorama is going to be a rooftop scene. Mm. And you guys know that I was really like looking for those uh, hand ninjas. I'm going to have Elektra and Psylocke fighting the hand ninjas because I think that there was a whole comic book about how they like revive both of them. They were yeah. dead. Yeah. So um, I'm going to have like them fighting like on the rooftop scene. So I do like battle scenes, but then a lot, a lot of times what I do with, I do some goofy stuff with my, with my dioramas. So there's like that bar scene that I have, I, sh I showed you all in the chat. It's just like, there's like Panthro and then there's Gambit, there's Ryu, there's, and I think I have Rodimus Prime like walking up to Wolverine as the bartender asking for Energon. It's just, it's silly. And, and, and you can have like a lot of fun with dioramas too. You could basically mix all the different worlds of fandom yeah, like, of Joe's. Yeah, I got Duke and Roadblock and Scarlet. They're having a beer at the next booth and Michelangelo's joining them for pizza. Um, it's it's just, like a VFW bar with 80s characters. It is, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> It was a lot of fun creating it too. I, I don't have it to display because as Kevin will tell you, extreme sets, they don't travel well because they're cardboard and you have to take them down. Then you have to reset them back up. And yeah, it's, just, it, it, and you have to, like I could carry the piece, but um, the ones that we ordered yesterday, Kevin, I, I think they're pop-up, right? So like yeah, you a lot of them are pop-up dioramas. You can go to extreme-sets.com right now. Uh, if you spend more than 120 bucks, use save 25 save. Mm -hmm. um, be careful mixing pre-order and in stock because then you won't get that in stock for a long time until the pre-order shows up. But yeah. Kalish, continue. Oh, uh, yeah. So there's the extreme sets. Then there's the other diorama I'd like to talk about that everybody seems to have or want, it's this one behind me, it's this NECA one, this NECA street scene diorama. Yes. Uh, most people, they do buy it for, I guess it was initially, I, I don't want to move it, I'm going to have to bring the computer closer. Turn <laughs> I got Shadow King, Megatron, I got um, uh, Hercules and Panthro, and then, you know, the, the burbles are over here. Can't really see Wolf's Bane down there. You can really, and April O'Neil's like, you know, have it, she, my custom April O'Neil's got her She's running an exclusive story on all this shit that's going on behind her. She's uh, she's reporting for Channel Six. Mm -hmm. um, this was initially meant for, I think it was meant for uh, the movie Turtles when they came out with it, because they came out with a nighttime scene, like the background was nighttime, and it was released as a Comic Con exclusive with the four turtles, with uh, you know, um, from the movie. That's now right. They have an animated one, which I pre-ordered because I do collect mostly the animated, you know, obviously the animated turtles, I collect those and it just goes better with it. So I don't really know if I'm going to keep this, sell this, but you could use it for anything. And I don't think really NECA cares what you're using it for. NECA just really wants the money. So if you want, yeah. to, put Mar you want to put Marvel Legends on there, you want to put Mattel products on there, they're like, go nuts for donuts. We just want your $150 for the, for the Dio. Yeah. And they got my $150 for the Dio because, I mean, it, it, it just works for so many things. Yeah. It, it, and it's not, see, one of the things I'll say is like, you guys have, Fab and Kevin, you have, you have very high quality figures. And so a high quality figure requires a high quality diorama, which you guys collect. My, my, I don't have really, really expensive figures. So like, since I have something as basic as like a Thundercat, like it would just i think the dioramas that you guys have or like you're like you know what you showed that would kind of overshadow lion -O. i mean you yeah. think 
for me, you just basically have to have a dial that goes with the quality like this. It's, it's not a cheap dial by any means. It, it's just right. not, it's not as fancy and as elaborate and ornate. And it's highly right, but, you know, Lino's never going to need, you know, a destroyed ruin with girders <laughs> and all that stuff. So it, it's it's the opposite point. It's like you don't want to put figures on, on you know, cartoony or more, like, you know, uh, bright dioramas. You kind of want to put them in something that, that doesn't contrast as much, and it works both ways. Right, yeah. So, like, um, you know, the one that I made, like, I feel like that that fits for, like, animate, like, the colors I use, I use, like, like colors that pop, like, animated colors, because it's right. like turtles. So that's, like, you know, one thing I'll say for customizers out there, too, you, like, you want to go with what fits, um like fab has appropriate dios for his you know his mezco figures because they're expensive figures and he wants to he also he who doesn't want to have because there could be paint chip on this and you wouldn't want to get that on a mezco figure because for mm. obvious reasons like he said he doesn't want to get sand in the whatever right yeah the joints um but then these are just NECA figures and nothing against NECA, but I mean, they don't always put out the highest quality figures because sometimes if ever you guys have opened something, um, legs just bust right off once you take them out of the package. Oh yeah. You got to give them the, the NECA uh, hot spa treatment. Yeah. Uh, you got to you know, you gotta throw them in the hot water for a little mm -hmm. bit. You got to loosen up those joints. Um, but Leonardo's cool. You know, he's a little loosey goosey. But to, to go back on that street scene, too, like, yeah, they did the three different versions of it, but everyone across all lines, like, I would I would get that dio anyway, just because it's a really good modular yeah. piece. And, like, with the with Kevin's brick wall, you can take out those little pieces of the bricks, right, and, you know, change some things around, like, you know, where the door goes or whatever. But uh, you can plug some stands into those, too. And sometimes you might have to dremel them out, but I think there's stands that will fit cleanly in there, and you can get the same use that KJ is getting out of the Bandai one and plug some stands into that NECA one and it works for displaying, but it also works great as just like, you need, you know, it, that fits great across two DTOFs right here. And that's an extra two, three shells right on top of your DTOF, which is great for just, just straight up displaying more figures too. So that's one of those that can go both ways, honestly. Uh, that backdrop, is it reversible or is it only just one? So the, actually, you know what, now that you say it, it is reversible, the nighttime mm -hmm. is on the other side. Yeah. Gotcha. And I've actually seen just that backdrop used in a lot of photography. So even even one element of that hundred you know hundred fifty dollar purchase will you know will will get tons of uses. That, that that busts off. You can have like I don't know like juggernaut like blasting through. You can have right. Like, you can I mean you can even do the interior of that and have like a finished inside and you can. That sounds terrible, but you can have a finished interior and uh, you can you know really get um, both sides out of it used. Yeah, I, I asked my buddy who works for NECA, I was like, does NECA have any plans for doing the inside of this of this diorama? Like maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know, release and say like like a table, you could have like maybe fake bags of cocaine, there could be like a drug deal going on. <laughs> right, right. You know, whatever, like we, then you can put the Punisher in it, you can put, I mean, NECA does their own, they do, uh, I guess they do Marty McFly, they do Ninja Turtles, they don't really do a lot of... Um, what are some of their other, they do the, well, they do the diorama accessory packs. So like for a lot of the horror figures they've done, you know, they've did the, the Pennywise. I have a few of them for the NECA, for the uh, Mezco figures. Cause they come with accessories that the Mezco didn't necessarily. Yeah. And they they go for serious money now. Cause they really only do short runs of them. Maybe they'll re-release them down the line, hopefully. But the Freddy Krueger furnace is a really nice piece from, yeah. from NECA with the light inside mm -hmm. the, uh, the Jason Yo. accessory pack, the Friday the 13th accessory pack has the dock. It has uh, it has a campfire, I believe, or maybe that came with one of the figures. Um, it comes with a Camp Crystal Lake sign. It comes with the stand for you to put the Part Six Jason underwater. You know, it, it comes with a lot of really cool stuff for displaying the NECA figures, but just accessory pieces that you can use for you know the rest of your collection. Yeah, um, that's pretty much all I got to show, other than the pictures that I sent Robert. Uh, I can show you what I'm working on. Please. Oh yeah, sure. yeah. You got you got me really interested in that too. I'm, I'm actually yeah. thinking so to get them. It's a it's supposed to be like a garage like slash barn. Um, it was kind of expensive, and I I was when I opened it, I was kind of pissed that it wasn't pre assembled because for 180 it was 180 bucks. Damn. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of money. Uh, wow. Detail and it's great, but I'm gonna have to paint it. I got to put a roof in there. So basically, what I'm gonna do is it's a garage. I'm gonna put the Punisher's motorcycle in there, and then just have you know Marvel characters like working on the motorcycle. 
-hmm. there's a bunch of tools and stuff that I have there there is that accessory set that uh, KJ told me about from uh, Big Bad Toy Store it's like a workbench and it's got tools and and they're I think they're 112 scale plus I'm sure I have I gotta have like screwdrivers and hammers and stuff laying around mm -hmm. somewhere I'm assuming what, what brand is that um it's a brand is, I is it Hasegawa hold on I'll show you the man and that's that's crazy that it's that much and it's not assembled right supposed to look like that yeah okay and all the instructions are in japanese okay yeah. oh even better wow okay <laughs> the best stuff the best stuff comes from japan best stuff comes from japan right. it, it's well, Koba, wow uh, koba ani is the name is i like that yeah i that I mean, one point I really want to make is that the 12 world sets, as, as kind of difficult as they can be to find, they, they do run a pretty good price. Like this, this is that two-sided one that I showed last episode. These were, they retail really for 75 each half. So, you know, put together as 150, I got it for 85 each for basically less than 200, about what you paid for, for that, that garage. And this is, you know, yeah. Fun. That's that's kind of wild. I know, and now I have to put all that together. Right? I mean, there you're paying for the opportunity to do labor. <laughs> <laughs> labor that I don't want to do. As a matter of fact, after right. the stream, I got to go to the uh, hobby store and I got to go buy more wood glue because I'm out of wood glue. Well, so, similar to that, I actually I, I don't I had some extreme sets when I when I when they were first coming around uh, and ACBA did some partnership stuff with them, so I had a few of the sets, but. At least the early ones for me, they were a little too glossy, a little too, you know, uh, cardboardy, like any little crease just like behind the lens just shows up like crazy with any amount of light. So that kind of thing can kind of bother me. That's why I always relegate them to like deep background pieces of anything. But I've, I've started looking on, on GPS lot and stuff like that on eBay where I got some of these, these cardboard backdrops right here. These are actually paper craft backdrops, the, the Black Panther throne room right here and that street scene behind my camera. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're paper crafts, so you have to cut them out and everything yourself, but they, they basically come in sheets like this, and this is supposed to be like Dragon Ball or something, like oh, wow. something or other, uh, but these are all, you know, as you see on the blown up view, they're all paper pieces, and you have to actually put them on foam backing yourself, also with Chinese instructions, so it can be a bit of a pain. I have a few of them that were a little simpler assembled. This is like kind of like a temple in the cosmos right, kind right, of thing. Right. There's like a little floor that goes with it too, which I don't have on, on foam. I just kind of let that sit as like the floor of my diorama. That would actually make me buy Mortal Kombat figs from Storm Collectibles. Right? Yeah, you know, something like this. And that sits on the bottom of my of my detail. Okay. Be, I like you know, I'm trying to get like a throne onto this and put uh, my my black hole. Or and have it be, you know, his, his, his yeah. temple on Atalan or something. I don't know. Worth it. They can be they can be a little bit of a pain. Like I, I haven't even messed with this one. I just got it because it was you know available, and I'm like ah, maybe, but I don't know. It's it's one of those things that where like once the labor starts getting real intensive, if it's more than a floor and a wall, now I got to do pillars. Like come on, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Another good one that they have uh, that's a company is uh, Toy Hacks. I don't actually have yeah. anything by Toy Hacks. But I did send Robert a picture of uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be like a, outside of like Eternia, the Eternian Palace. So right. For my for my good guys, my He-Man guys like that are at the Eternian Palace. I, I will purchase that one day. KJ usually is good with getting coupons and like discounts in the Ooh. chat and tell us what like when things right. are, things are on sale. I don't want to pay eighty five dollars for cardboard, um, but when it does go on sale, I probably will. Right. Yeah, that, that's the good thing about extreme sets too, is that they have sales all the time. So always yeah. always try to get it on sales because they can yeah. add up really quick. Yep. Or just search for codes. Like I found um there's a code they use Nomad, 15 bucks off. But just search. Just search for toy hacks. Search black op toys. Like always mm -hmm. search for codes. If you're on eBay, make an offer. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what right. you can save because that extends the range that you can collect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The more money you spend, the more money you can spend. Yeah. Yeah. When when KJ sent that link into the uh the chat with uh the exteriors, I'm like, oh cool. I'm like, oh cardboard. Okay, let me see it. Like 60. I just right. I just it's a little pricey, but I mean, yeah. you know, with the with the with the code, I, I think I got the two. I got the big dungeon and the big mansion, and we all know what I'm gonna use the mansion for. Uh you Transformers. Know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, knowing me, I might. I mean, I put Rodimus Prime in a bar, so right. um, maybe I'd put Megatron in the mansion. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so like after buying the two with KJ's code, it only costs like $110 for like, I'm assuming these are really big. They're big, they're right? Pretty big. They're big. Yeah. Like, like as, they're probably as wide as that bar scene that I have. If it, yeah, if it'll be about 14 inches tall. It'll be mm -hmm. very wide. You can either wow. have it be 360, like a square, or let it sprawl out. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that you can do with those. Okay. I think it's worth it for me personally. And well, that's, that's what everything. With all that said, Robert, what dioramas are you buying now? <laughs> You know, right now I'm just sticking with play sets. Uh, I've got plenty of them in, in storage. Uh, I will say, and it, it dawned on me that, so I don't know old place. I had my own geek room and I took my old matrix sets. Cause I had like the Neo doing the cartwheel, but he had the really cool background with like all the bullet holes. Oh, all the pillars with the bullet holes and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just put, yeah. But we'll bring him in the middle of that and had him like standing. And so I'm like, I'm like, oh, these are cool. And I like switch them in cable out. But honestly, right now, like I would love to, if I had the space, really try and like build like a cool dial. What I'd build, I don't know. I have no idea. I'd probably try and build something like like Kevin built like for my Ninja Turtles. But mm. then again, I'm like, I've got the 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 firehouse. So I might as well just put them on top and, and let New York come to them. So <laughs> I, that's a, that's yeah. a cool set firehouse. The firehouse is an amazing set, yeah. uh, and but the only here is the the issue though that I I did have were old cartoons or old play sets and new figures mm. don't exactly always line up. Mm -mm. I tried putting the turtles in the firehouse and they were just like hulking in it, uh, so right. I them on top. Uh, but. It would kind of make sense that mutated turtles would be a bit bigger than. Uh, I, I've always been trying to get the uh, the firehouse door from Diamond Select. Like if I could ever find that fully assembled cheap, I would just use it as like you know the background for my Ghostbusters from Mezco. But God, like since that was spread across like what three or five waves or something, it's like impossible to find, and like the figures by themselves, let alone someone just selling the yeah. backdrop. I the same thing with the rooftop from the first yeah. movie. Mm -hmm. The I have, and that's kind of what I was going for is like kind of like the the first the the ninety nine or the ninety uh, film. But I have the doors. Like the only thing I'm missing, and it sucks, was the I had the uh, the sign that goes on top on on the side of the the firehouse. Mm -hmm. I had it in a bag in my car for some reason, and the bag got stolen. Oh man! So now I have to somehow track down this one piece of the old school firehouse. So I got the firehouse. Uh, I've got it. This would take a big piece, but I have Eternia yeah. from yeah. He-Man. Uh, not all the pieces. I mean, it 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 was in my grandmother's like basement for like twenty some odd years. Uh, I have to clean it up, but I mean, that thing is massive. Mm -hmm massive so i mean yeah that will somehow find its way onto a table at one point with my figures uh but my my dios you know it's as of right now this is uh, my my dad was gonna be is pretty much like shelves right now because my fiance say, maybe you could squeeze some like just backdrops in there you know you could have a little a little like front of the x mansion and then your x man in front of it and then true you know, I mean, and something like that that's that's a fun place i think i would recommend anyone really just trying to up class their display on you know a, a classic shelf display just a little bit more right yeah, and, you can go on facebook and go on living the adventure dials or joe for free backgrounds get them printed on cardstock right them up on your shelves maybe get some led lights it's dope it'll be dope mm -hmm. actually that uh is what i'll do because i do have cardstock that i can print on uh, and I've been trying to think of some way to make this look a little, a little better, a little cooler. Yeah, Joe, <laughs> Joe Dios .com, Living the Adventure Dios on Facebook. There you go. And I think, uh, uh, are we are we good? I think we're good. That that is all yeah. of the episode. Uh, so, okay. as you... always, uh, I forgot to mention this in the last episode. Uh, remember to like and subscribe our channel. Uh, we 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 like the people. We like the numbers. Um, you can find us uh, uh, 
Tori Kind of Mood on Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Obviously, you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, we've got uh, KJ uh, Black Genghis on uh, Instagram and YouTube. And that's okay. it for now. Okay, that's it for now. Okay. And then five of course, Fabster360 on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. Yeah. And then oh, I'm look also- at this. I'm also on the uh, ACBA podcast every Saturday. Uh, book ACBA here on YouTube as well. So definitely check that out. It's our live weekly news recap. Gets wild. Nice. And then, uh, Kevin, uh, I know you you do your uh, board game. Yep. Uh, Ale, Ale, Ale House Game Reviews. There we go. Ale House Game Reviews. And that is uh, one Friday every month. Uh, me and my friend, we um, she and I review board games. And we um, tell the hipsters what's good. I, I won't lie. I want to watch that now just to see how you how you grade board games. I want to see how you do this. It, it's fun, actually, because um, like I I do play these games because like uh, my friends and I like we, uh, during Rona it was hard. You can't really have too many get-togethers. Right. But we're smart about it. Like all of us, you know, like once every couple of weeks we get tested. Go, you know, go get a Rona test. So, as and most of my friends are like. They're not. Um, they're not going to parties. They're not like you know, traveling all around all around the world. Right. They're very smart. They stay in their house, um, and um, and a lot of them are now getting vaccinated. Uh, nice. like, my, like, like myself and like you. Yes. Um, so like with the vaccine and like once I'm you know I get my second shot, I'll uh, be more apt to have get-togethers and whatnot. And now that my mom's vaccinated, that's what's most important for me anyway. Not, not getting her sick one step closer to normalcy all right everyone and as always you can find me uh, on uh facebook instagram and twitter at bayou city geeks um and this has been a toy kind of mood kevin kj fabio hey guys this was fun yeah very fun thanks for having us dude peace out y'all bye bye